الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد و علی و صحبہ و سلم اما بعد احبت صفی اللہ شیخ الاسلام بن تیمیہ رحمت اللہ علیہ رحمت واسعہ He mentioned two ways in which the mu'min can go astray. Two ways in which the believer can go astray. And these two ways are indeed ways of misguidance and deviance and at the same time they appeal to our nafs they appeal to our own selves and that is why there's such a danger to the believer that the shaitan will come to you through various means and ways and those two ways in which the shaitan comes to you as mentioned by Shaykh al-Islam is through Shubahat and Shahwat. Shubahat refers to doubtful matters, matters in which the shaitan comes to you to deceive you in your creed or to deceive you in your manhaj, your methodology in giving da'wah or understanding Islam. That that is the way in which the shaitan seeks to, to take you astray or lead you astray. So for example, often when residing in the West or residing in a non-Muslim society, I should say would be better, is that you're challenged with a variety of different ideas and concepts and you are challenged in your faith and in your exhortion of Tawheed that the shaitan will come to you as you will have to interact and engage with a variety of different ideologies and methodologies either for understanding of Islam or totally outside of the fold of Islam you'll be challenged so with those challenges, you have to be equipped with the tools, which is ilm, which is knowledge. Knowledge is what's going to help protect you. The knowledge and the practice. And the knowledge is not simply something on the tongue. It's not simply a profession on the tongue. Likewise, the shahada, the testimony of faith, is not just simply testifying that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his last prophet and messenger. But rather it requires tatbiq, it requires practicing that shahada, practicing that tawheed, practicing that ubudiyah by worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So it necessitates action because that's a part of iman. That's what's gonna help you defend against that Shubahat. So it's the knowledge. And that knowledge comes through various ways. It, the most important of them is through the ulama and of course through reading and synthesizing the text, the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the understanding of the Madhab of the Salaf. And by in order for you to gain that understanding of the madhab of the salaf because all of us we could read in our various languages the quran translations of the quran and translations of the sunnah of the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam but then we may and more than likely come up with our own understanding at least in some things some things that seem unclear or some things which are more open to interpretation we're going to come up with 
incorrect understandings and various understandings. And building upon those understandings, we could begin to accept new and deviant ideologies. Deviant in that they deviate from the Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Madhab of the Salaf and the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. So that's how the Shubahat comes to you and the way to defend against it. The second way is the Shahwat, as we mentioned, through our desires. And this is also a natural inclination. Human beings not only are curious, but human beings have desires, of course. We have a Kramakam Allah, we have sexual desires, so we have the need to be with the opposite sex. And some people have deviated even in that way in which they are not just inclined, but they are fully following their desires and whatever has corrupted them to where they follow those desires or carry out those desires with the same sex. And as we mentioned, the shahwat, it's in accordance with our fitra to a degree. Of course it is, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created it and gave us this innate desire to create or to procreate as they say, meaning to have, uh, you know, bear children and, and so forth. And when it comes to our desires, we don't, Islam gives us the means to police those desires. Islam gives us the means to police those desires so that Islam recognizes that we have those desires because from Allah Azza wa Jal and the desires are from Allah Azza wa Jal. So he gives us a halal means of fulfilling our desires and that's through the marital bond. And getting back to the the danger of the shahwat because the shahwat we are so desensitized and we are so bombarded with sexual stimulus everywhere and through all forms of media that it's almost impossible to escape it in totality but when you're in societies that are not that are less conservative less conservative in the dress less conservative in the behaviors open you encounter even greater dangers where it's just it means nothing to see almost every piece of the body of the opposite sex it, it means nothing it, you become desensitized to it because it's everywhere you go to the store you go to the masjid you go wherever you go and it's around you and the stimulus is also through all the various forms of media assaulting you so the mu'min is required to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often and to combat that by self-restraint which very few of us are able to overcome those assaults and be successful. We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from the illness of shubahat and shahawat, those things which assault us and corrupt us. And may Allah protect us from our own evil desires. Wassalamu alaikum. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayk.